QuickBooks Online 2022. New vendors set up and accounts payable beginning balances. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file that we set up with our 30-day free trial. Holding control down, scrolling up just a bit to get to that 1 to 5%. We're currently in the home page or the Get Things Done page. We're in the business view as compared to the accounting view if you wanted to go to the accounting view which you can do by going to the cog up top switching to the accounting view we're going to stay in the business view but toggle back and forth through the sample file which has the accounting view just so we can see where different things are located the same things located in different places i should say so now we're going to be entering another beginning balance item let's jump on over to our beginning balances our concept here by the way before we do will be that we're trying to enter all the beginning information in terms of the underlying foundations that we need to enter before we start entering the financial transactions on top of them for the current period that we'll be working on to create the financial statements, balance sheet and income statement, the financial transactions typically being input with the items in the plus button, the invoices, the checks, the bills, the pay bills, and so on and so forth. But you first want the foundation input so the input of those data input fields are as easy as possible. And we might have some beginning balances from the prior accounting system or some beginning balances that we currently have before having an official accounting system that we need to enter into the system. That is what we are doing now. We've been entering like the more difficult ones first. We've entered the inventory items. We have entered the accounts receivable items. Now we're going to enter the accounts payable items, which also has a, another added issue with it, like the accounts receivable in that we not only want to have the balance in there, which we could just do with a journal entry if that's what's all what we were concerned with, but we also need to know who we owe the money to. This represents us owing other people money, and we need to know how much we owe each individual so that we can then pay those individuals at some point in the future. Therefore, we have another subledger kind of problem that we have to deal with. So it's going to be similar to the receivable issue. Let's go back on over to our reports here. This one uh, will be located, I, you could think about this, you might say, well, the first thought of an accountant might have, if you know debits and credits, is to say, well, I'll just go to the new button up top and I'll enter a journal entry and I'll increase the accounts payable. But it might be a little bit difficult to enter the vendors that way. And even if you entered the vendor that way, it wouldn't have like the bill form that's easily then matched up to the pay bill form. So we could just go right forward from our accounting process uh, with that bill in the system. The other thing you might think of is to say to go down to the bookkeeping item on the left, which if you were in the accounting view, which would be in the accounting tab, if you're in the accounting view, and then we would go to the chart of accounts and you might go into the accounts payable, for example, which would be, it's in order by type. So we'll go down here to the A to the P accounts payable and you might use the register and say I'm just going to enter something directly into the register here that would be similar to entering a journal entry same problem you want to enter the actual bill so what we're going to do instead is open up the hamburger and we're going to go into the pay the get paid but now we're focused on the pay side of the get paid and pay that they kind of crammed into one area here and we're on the vendors down below if you were in the accounting view it would look like this you would be in the expenses tab and then we would be in the vendors area on the expenses tab so going back on over so we're in the vendors area and we're going to add some vendors now you could you could do this in a similar fashion you can add basically one at a time or you could you can uh import vendors in the similar fashion as we've seen now because we've done this importing thing in the past we're, we're just going to add one vendor but if you were to import it it would look similar similar process as we did with the customers and you can you could set up your file similar process as we did with the items but we're just going to add the one singular item as we do this it will also be similar to the customers as well in terms of the, the simply the data input form because it's going to be the contact information and so on related to the vendor so if we tab through this thing, then we're going to tab on through it and say we're, we don't have a title. We're going to say the first name. I'm going to say the company. Let's do the company first, which is going to be Epiphone. Epiphone. That's who we buy our guitars from. And let's see if I spelled that. 
So there, I fixed it. I think it's right now. So we'll put the contact information up top, which I'm going to say Sam tab tab. And I'm going to say Rand, Sam Rand, something like that. We're going to say the company is going to be also Epiphone and display. I'm going to display the company name and not, not the Sam name up top. Print uh, as check as. I want to print the check as the display name, which is going to be how the check will be populated. If you had an address that you needed down here, you could put the address. I'll put the 80 Cynthia Street. I'm not sure that's exactly right, but I'm going to keep it with the practice problem. Beverly Hills, California. So I need a lowercase i here on the hills. And the zip code is going to be 90210 united states and then we're going to have notes no notes no attachments the email address you could have i'm going to call it sam at let's say it was epiphone.com sam at epiphone.com phone number five 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 four six seven five two one two four mobile no tab tab other other tab website tab billing rate no terms let's set the terms at this is going to be we'll set net 30 on the terms opening balance now here's the key for us to enter this beginning balance you're not going to use this most likely any time other than when you, when you enter the first this first vendor in place so i'm going to say that opening balance is going to be that full fifteen thousand that we had over here so we only have the one person we owe so i'm going to say the full fifteen thousand is what we owe this vendor for and then we'll say that once again is as of the uh december 31st the last day of the prior period so the cutoff date that we're going to start at january 1st 2022 will will should roll over and everything should be good now what's it going to do when i record that it's a vendor so it's probably going to record a mock bill which means it's probably going to record the other side to an expense, which would cause a problem if it was in the current period, but it's not. It's in the prior period. Therefore, that expense will roll into equity and everything will work the way it's supposed to. Do we need to track a 1099 for them? I'm going to say no. And so I'm going to say, let's do it. Let's say save it. And the, this phone number, this is a wrong email. All right. Let's, what if I said sam at gmail.com? That one probably exists. So we'll save that. And so there we have it. That's not a real email. So don't email Sam or anything or get him mad at us. Like as if I don't know who that is. Someone's email probably. But in any case, then we're going to say that should that should have recorded a balance for us. So let's open up our financials, right click it on the tab up top, duplicate, go back up top, right click again and duplicate ultra vase another time. And then we're going to go into the reports, which are going to be up top in the business view. If you were in the accounting view, by the way, the reports would be located in the reports, which is kind of more clear, it seems like. But in any case, we'll stick with the business view here. going to open up the balance sheet, balance sheet. And then I'm going to go up top and we're going to range in the changing from 01, 01, 21, 12, 31, 21 and run it closing the hamburger holding control scrolling up just a bit and so now we've got accounts payable on the books at 15,000 just what we wanted that's exactly what we wanted to happen and it happened making us the happiest people in the world and then if I go into it if I click on it and go into it notice that put it in there with a bill form so if I go into it again drilling down to the source document it put it in there with a bill form it just made a bill form out of nowhere without a with a vendor name of the epiphone and it just put the other side into miscellaneous expense it's like whatever we'll just put the other side into miscellaneous expense so that means it went to the income statement let's close it back out and check it out scrolling up go on back then back get on back to there and so the other side is on the income statement there it is it's included in that five five so let's go. Is that going to cause us the problem? I don't think so, but let's see why. Let's go back to the second tab where we're going to open the income statement. The income statement. I've got a statement to make about income. I'm going to call it the profit and loss, the P and the L. 
Here it is, closing the hamburger, and then ranging the changing. Oh one, oh one, two one, two twelve, thirty one, two one, and run it again. So now we've got twenty thousand five hundred from the prior thing, the receivable, and then it just made this bill and dumped it into other miscellaneous expense. If I go into it, there's the bill, and there it is. So there's the bill. So if I go back, is that a problem? Because no, I don't want anything in my income statement, but this is as of before my cutoff date. So as of the cutoff date, when we're starting the news file, which is January 1st, 2022, this will all roll into equity, will not be a problem. If you wanna look up anything prior to the cutoff date, January 1st, 2022, you should be looking at the prior accounting system, whatever that was. Therefore, I'm not worried about any junk prior to this, as long as my cutoff numbers are okay. And if I scroll up and change this to the current period, what, where I want, where I'm concerned with the information in this file, then I can change the date and just check it. 010122 to 123122, two twos. And the 2000 double deuce has nothing in it for the 2000 double deuce year. And that's good because we don't want anything as of that year. So what about the balance sheet? If I go back to the balance sheet, we have net income as of the end of 2021. If I go to the next day, it'll all roll into retained earnings where it should be as of when we want to be working on stuff. So 010122 to, to let's say 0101 to let's just say 22. And then, okay, now I miss 010122. And then run it and scrolling down. Now it rolled into equity. Everything looks perfect. The opening balance is still ugly, but we're gonna fix that at the end, just making a journal entry, taking everything out of whatever miscellaneous equity account they put it into and put it into the proper account, which for us will just simply be retained earnings at that time. So we've got the 15,000 on the books. We've got, we've got the balance sheet working out. Everything else is washing out to equity as is the plan. And so everything is going according to plan and the plan has come together which I love. I love it when the plan comes together.